right. In this video, I'm going to be looking at using diagonalization in order to interpret long-term behavior for population matrix models. Now, let's recall what it means to have the diagonalization for a matrix A. We can write it as a product of matrices P, D, and P inverse, where D is a diagonal matrix consisting of the eigenvalues of A, and P is a matrix whose columns are the eigenvectors. It follows then that A to the K is equal to P times D to the K times P inverse. And generally, passing to the diagonal matrix D is much simpler in that taking powers of a diagonal matrix is a lot easier than taking powers of some general matrix A. Now, the same is true even for the limit. If we look at the limit as K tends to infinity of A to the K, it's equal to the limit as K tends to infinity of P D to the K P inverse using the diagonalization. And once again, it's typically much simpler to find the limit for the right-hand side. All right, so this diagonalization is going to let us understand the long-term behavior for various matrix models, today looking at populations that change according to a Leslie matrix. Let's take our Leslie matrix to be 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 1, 0.6, and 0. The eigenvalues and their corresponding eigenvectors for M our lambda 1, which is 1.6, v1 equal to 1, 1, lambda 2 equal to negative 0.9, and v2 equal to negative 9, 16. I'll let you check this on your own. Now, notice that if we take m times v1, that's equal to lambda 1 v1, because lambda 1 is an eigenvalue corresponding to eigenvector v1. And that's equal to 1.6 times V1. So after one time period, the population distribution has increased by a factor of 1.6, the largest eigenvalue. We'll call that our growth factor, lambda 1 equal 1.6. Now there's a reason we're not using lambda 2 as the growth factor. It corresponds to an eigenvector V2 where one of the components is negative. And for population vectors, it doesn't make sense to have a negative component. We don't know what it means to have a negative population. So that's why we're going to stick with using lambda 1, the positive eigenvalue, as our growth factor. Now, let's find the long-term growth rate for the same population and its long-term distribution of the population. This is the part where we'll use the diagonalization. We want to find the limit as k tends to infinity of m to the k times some initial vector of our population. Using the diagonalization, this is equal to the limit as k tends to infinity of p d to the k p inverse times p of zero. For this particular example, our eigenvectors were 1, 1 and negative 9, 16. The eigenvalues were 1.6 and negative 0.9. Inverting the eigenvector matrix would give us 16 9, negative 1, 1, with a factor of 1 over 25 out front, which I'll pull all the way to the front of the matrices here. And then we've got some initial population vector that we'll deal with at the end. All right, now we want to think about what's happening as k tends to infinity. The only place that we see k in here is in this middle diagonal matrix. I'd like to first pull out 1.6 to the k from this matrix. If I factor out 1.6 to the k, I have to pull it out from every single entry of our matrix d to the k. And at one spot, I'll have 1 to the k or 1. 0 say 0. 
And then for the 2, 2 position, we'd have negative 0.9 to the k divided by 1.6 to the k. Everything else right now is staying the same. Now here's the key fact. If you have a real number r whose absolute value is strictly less than 1, then r to the k converges to 0 as we let k tend to infinity. Here, the absolute value of negative 0.9 over 1.6 is strictly smaller than 1, so our term negative 0.9 over 1.6 to the k will tend to 0 as k goes to infinity. Let's do that now. Out front, we still have a factor 1.6 to the k. The diagonal matrix becomes 1, 0, 0, letting that term tend to 0 as k gets really large. And then everything else, again, is untouched at this point in time. Right. Now, let's multiply through. Factor of 1.6 to the k over 25 still out front. Multiplying these first two matrices together, we'll have 1, 0, 1, 0. We still have the portion coming from P inverse. Multiply through again. This time we get the matrix 16, 9, 16, 9. And at this point, I'm going to write P of 0 as its components, P1 of 0, P2 of 0. Now we'll multiply out the remaining matrix with our initial population vector. That gives us 16 times P1 of 0 plus 9P2 of 0. And then the same thing for the second component as well. Finally, I'm just going to rewrite in a way that makes clear what our growth factor is and what vector we end up with for the population distribution. I have here 16 P1 of 0 multiplying the vector 1, 1 coming from this portion plus 9 P2 of 0 also multiplying the vector 1, 1, coming from the second portion here. That allows me to pull the vector 1, 1 outside. 1 1.6 to the k over 25, 16 p1 of 0, plus 9 p2 of 0, all multiplies the vector 1, 1. What's out front is some number. The important piece is that this vector 1, 1 is what's determining the population distribution for the limit. Altogether, the total population can be thought of as adding those components, 1 plus 1 is 2, and then we'll divide our vector 1, 1 by that sum, 2, to get the vector half a half, which means we have half the population in each age group in the long term. Now, a couple of things I want to point out here. One is that the factor out front that's telling us how much it's growing was still 1.6 for each time step. The long-term growth rate is still lambda 1 equal to 1.6. 
and the long-term population distribution, 1-1, one, one, or if you prefer to rewrite it as a half, a half after normalization, right, was our corresponding eigenvector. This is a really neat point in that we started with some initial population vector, but we never specified what it was. It was just some vector P1 of zero, P2 of zero. And yet, no matter what, in the limit, we end up with a population distribution completely determined by the first eigenvector. That is what is so incredibly special about our eigenvectors. And now we know how to use them to find long-term distributions.